Hello, uh, this is Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering. And uh, in this lecture, we will start off with the bus impedance matrix building algorithm. So in the previous lectures, we saw that a knowledge of the bus impedance matrix is very important for evaluating short circuit currents. And uh, we saw that the Thevenin's impedance at any bus is nothing but the diagonal element of the corresponding bus impedance matrix. So now we will see how we go about uh, getting the bus impedance ma matrix in a systematic manner. So, one way of evaluating the bus impedance matrix is to evaluate it as an inverse of the Y bus. Uh, you already have studied uh, different algorithms for forming of the bus admittance matrix. And bus admittance matrix is very easy to form if you don't have mutual coupling just by inspection. The algorithm is pretty simple to program. However, uh, remember that Y bus is a complex matrix. That means the elements are all complex. So in larger systems, evaluating the inverse of a complex matrix uh, was an issue in the early era of digital computers. And therefore, you know, instead of directly inverting the Y bus, uh, people came up with different algorithm altogether for building the Z bus in a systematic fashion. And uh, from a mathematical point of view, if the matrix is uh, ill conditioned, then the inverse uh, may not uh, be possible to evaluate. So in such cases, we have to build the Z bus using a different method. And that's what we are going to see now. And Y bus is sparse, whereas Z bus is a full matrix. That means the elements, the non-zero elements are many. Whereas in Y bus, you have very few non-zero elements because the Y bus is formed entirely based on the connectivity. Okay, so Z bus is a full matrix as compared to a Y bus, which is a sparse matrix. And computation, as I told you, of the inverse is not very easy for large systems. So we use Z-Bus building algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step addition of the lines of the system. Now, the equation you would be using is this. This is called as the impedance reference frame of representation. So here, E bus or V bus, you can uh, denote it either way, is equal to Z bus into I bus. E bus is the vector of bus voltages. Z bus is the bus impedance matrix. And I bus is the vector of current injections at various nodes. Okay, so E bus will be a N by one vector and Z bus will be an N by N vector and I bus will be an N by one vector. Now, I just want to clarify one important point here, which often leads to confusion. Normally, when you say an N bus system, say supposing I say a 14 bus system, IEEE 14 bus system, IEEE 30 bus system. So these are the number of buses of the network, excluding the reference bus, which is the ground bus. Okay, so whenever we talk of, um, you know, N bus, we are actually talking of N external nodes plus one reference node, which is the ground. Because all your single phase diagrams, all your sing single phase diagrams you draw, equivalent, the single phase equivalent diagram of the three phase circuit is from line to neutral. So it's, it's a single phase representation of the three phase system, right? 
So you can represent it only for balanced systems because only for balanced systems, the currents and voltages of one phase, the magnitudes are same in the other two phases. Only thing is they're displaced by 120 degrees, right? So this neutral bus or the ground bus or the reference bus, this is not mentioned when we talk of the number. Clear? So when I say the Z bus is an N by N matrix, it is for an N bus system where N is excluding the ground. If you include the reference bus, it would be N plus one, right? N plus one buses. So please be very clear. Don't have any confusion because in some networks, we would give you the reference bus also. And that's how you build the algorithm. That's how you build the algorithm. Yeah, so we already saw this. E bus is the vector of bus voltages. I bus is the vector of bus injection. And Z bus is the bus impedance matrix relating the two. The size of Z bus is N by N, N where N is number of buses excluding the reference bus, right? So for an N bus system on expansion, we get E1 is equal to Z11 I1 plus Z12 I2 and so on. So for any bus EK, bus k, you can write ek is equal to zk1 i1 plus zk2 i2, so on, zkn in, and for en, you can write this. So the potential of the reference bus is always taken to be zero. Okay, you have done nodal analysis in network theory, and there you know what do you do? You represent all the voltages with respect to the reference bus whose voltage is taken as zero. So here in this matrix, I have not shown the reference bus, which is the ground, normally the ground in a practical system. Now, when current is injected only in bus K, so just look at this equation. I inject a current only in bus uh, K, right, IK. So then what happens? All the other currents are taken to be zero. All the other currents are taken to be zero. So only you will have only these elements Z1 K I K because only I K is non zero Z K K I K Z N K I K. So what will be E1? E1 will be equal to Z1 K I K. E K will be equal to Z K K I K. E N will be equal to Z N K I K. This is assuming I am having an injection only at bus K. Right? Why we are doing it? We will see shortly. So EK will be equal to ZKK IK and at a general bus EI, it will be equal to ZIK IK. And if I make, if I inject one per unit, EK will be equal to ZKK and EI will be equal to ZIK, right? Now, all the diagonal elements of the bus admittance matrix are called the driving point impedance at the bus, the driving point impedance at the bus K. And the off diagonal elements ZIK are called the transfer impedances. Okay, so please remember ZIK is not the reciprocal of YIK. So you cannot do the inverse element by element. This is a common mistake made by students. You have to invert the whole matrix. So ZIK is not the reciprocal of YIK. So the way the algorithm is built is as follows. We assume we know the Z bus for a partial network. And I keep adding elements and build it. Now you may ask, how do I start off? Well, you start off with no element. So your partial, partial network is a network with zero elements. Clear? So when I start the algorithm, my partial network is the network with zero elements. Then I take the first element and modify this matrix. Then I add the second element, then the third element and so on. That's why it's called as the Z bus building algorithm. You build it one by one, element by element, the matrix is built. So we will see how, how we do it. So in this lecture, I will be tell, telling you about addition of a branch. Now, what is a branch? Okay. So now we will see what are the different kinds of lines which you can add to a partial 
network. So let us say this is a partial network, right? And the node zero is the reference bus. And I told you in practical systems, it is nothing but the ground. And I have n external buses, right? So plus zero, zero is the reference. And E1, E2 and all are voltages of the buses with respect to the ground. I told you, they're all phase voltages, line to neutral voltage. Okay, and in a balanced system, it is line to ground, same. Line to neutral and line to ground are the same. And I1, I2, you, you can see here, I have shown the arrows into the nodes. They are all current injections into the nodes. So let me assume this is my partial network. This is my partial network. So what are all the different kinds of lines or elements I can add to it? The first one is, so this N will go on changing, right? N will go on changing because this is only partial, right? Understand that. So when I begin initially, N is zero, nothing. I don't have anything. So I start off by adding the first element. So the first type of line you add is between the reference bus and a new bus. That means I have N here. So I will have one N plus one. And between the reference and the new bus, I add a line. That is the first type of line you can add to the partial network. The second type between existing bus and new bus. Okay, so say, say one between one and a new bus, two and a new bus or n and a new bus. So this is the second type of line I can add. So there is no standard nomenclature for it. But some authors call this as a type 1 addition and this as a type 2 addition. Basically, what you have to note here is I am adding a new bus to the network, to the partial network. So by adding a new element, a new bus is added to the partial network, right? So I told you the size of the Z bus is equal to N by N, where N is the total number of buses. Right? So when I start off partially with n, say n equal to 2, I'll say with n equal to 2. So when I add a new bus, what will the size become? It will become 3 by 3 because a new bus is added. Before the addition, the size of the z bus would be 2 by 2. Now on adding a new bus, it will become 3 by 3. So both these two types of lines where you add a new bus, will increase the size of the bus impedance matrix. Will increase the size of the bus impedance matrix by one. Okay, next. So this is called as a branch. So what is a branch? A branch is a line added to the existing partial network between any node of the partial network and a new node including the reference, reference and the new node, okay? So that's called as a branch. Now, the third type, type three, is the addition of a line between the reference bus and existing bus. That means what? I, add, I already have a partial network. I already have a partial network with n buses. So I add a line, say, between zero and one or zero and two, or zero and some k, or zero and a. Okay, so what am I doing? I am adding another line, a new line, between the reference and the existing, any of the existing buses. So I'm not having a new bus. I'm not having adding a new bus. So you can instinctively say that the size of the bus impedance matrix will not change here because I have not added a new bus. And type four is between two existing buses. So I can add a line between one and two, between one and K, between one and N, or two and three, two and K, two and N, between any two buses which are already existing. Okay, so such an addition is called as a link, as a link. So essentially, when you start building the Z-Bus algorithm, you start with a null matrix. That means when no element is added. And then element by element, you go on adding and building the Z-Bus. 
So every element you add, element here means line. So every line you add will belong to one of these four categories. Either it will be a branch between a reference bus and a new bus or an existing bus and a new bus. Or it would be a link between the reference bus and an existing bus or between two existing buses. So now what we will do in the algorithm is we will see how the Z bus is modified for each of these type of line additions. And in this lecture, I'll be taking a branch. And in the next lecture, we will see about addition of a link. So this is my partial network. I already have N buses and I have a reference bus. So now I am adding an element PQ. Okay, so P is an existing bus, which is already there in the network, in the partial network. And Q is the new bus and Q is the new bus. Okay, I will derive generally for any PQ and then we will see what will happen if P is the reference bus. That is a special case. P is being a reference bus is a special case of the general case where P is an any existing bus. So how do I go about it? Now first thing, this is addition of a branch. Now first thing you should see is that this line is open. Right, because this Q is a new node you have added. So this line is open and no current can flow in this line. No current can flow in this line. Are you understanding? Q is some node you have added, a line between that. It is not closed. See, Q is not connected to any of the other nodes in the system. So obviously by just looking at it, you can see that there can be no current flow from P to Q. It is a branch, okay? So now it will increase the size of the matrix by one, obviously. This partial network size will be n by n by n cross n. And when I add a new node, it will become n plus one cross n plus one. So now let us see what happens. This is what is the meaning of addition of a link. Link is between any two existing buses, P and Q. This is how it would look. And now you see, I have the same N buses, I have the same N buses. So the size of the matrix will remain unchanged for addition of a link. So now we will see what happens when you add a branch, when I add a branch, right? So this small ZPQPQ, you can see here, this is nothing but the impedance of the line you have added. It is impedance of the line PQ, which is what you are adding now. Okay. Now EP is the voltage between P and reference and EQ is the potential between Q and the reference. Obviously, standard notations. And VPQ is the drop in this line. VPQ is the drop in the line. IQ, IQ would be the current injected into bus Q. Generally, when, when you have a closed path, when you have a closed path and I, I is the current injected into any node I in the original network. Okay. I, I is any node uh, I and the current injected into the node. So current injections are always shown as current sources between the reference node and the node under consideration. So this is how you would do it. So now we will write all our equations based on this network. So you will be using simple circuit theory. Fine. Now let's assume I have an injection only at bus I. I have an injection only at bus I. So we saw previously that when you have an injection only in one bus, then the voltage E1 will be equal to Z1I into II. Okay, E2 would be Z2I into II. And what would be EP? EP would be ZPI into II. And EQ, EN would be ZNI into II. And EQ would be ZQI into II. Please remember, as of now, I don't know ZQI because I have not built the matrix for the bus Q. So our whole idea is to find out this ZQI. 
okay this is what i want to do next so let me make this i i equal to 1 per unit let me make i i equal to 1 per unit so then what happens e1 e2 e3 all of them will be equal to the corresponding uh, impedance matrix elements so e1 will be z1 i e2 will be z2 i ep will be z p i and en will be z n i and eq will be z q i okay now ep should be equal to eq why because there is no drop in this line why because there can be no current flow in this line right so as of now when i just add a new node q and a line in between p and q no current can flow because q is not connected to any uh, any other bus and therefore the ep will be equal to eq as ipq is equal to 0 you don't have any drop in the line so what do i get here if ep is equal to eq zpi will be equal to zqi will be equal to ziq do i know zpi yes i know zpi why because i already know i already know the partial network bus impedance matrix clear so i have a partial network i know the bus impedance matrix for that and p is a node in that particular partial network therefore zpi is known to me clear hence if i know zpi zqi i know i know all the elements of zqi are equal to zpi and what is the variable i i will vary from 1 to n because i have n nodes in the old network so i will vary from 1 to n so i can i can calculate clear so i have got a simple equation from the partial network zqi is simply equal to zpi so i can find out all the elements clear now how do i find zqq so you know i told you by adding a branch by adding a branch the size will increase by 1 so what was n cross n of the partial network, the bus impedance matrix, will now become n plus 1 cross n plus 1. So I need that diagonal element, zqq. How do I get it? Simple. We'll use the same strategy. Now what I will do, I will inject, I will inject, uh, just see here. Yeah, I will inject a current iq. I will inject a current iq into bus Q. Can I do it? Of course I can do it. What prevents me from doing it? Okay. So I will inject a current IQ into bus uh, Q. Then the same thing. E1 will be equal to Z1Q IQ. And if I make IQ 1 per unit, it will be equal to Z1Q. And E2 will be Z2Q IQ. And that will be equal to Z2Q. EP will be ZPQ. And EN will be ZNQ. And EQ will be ZQQ IQ. So I have got the voltages. Now will a current flow in the line? Yes. Why will the current flow in the line? Because I am injecting. Externally, I am injecting a current into node Q. Right? And so that means I have connected a current source between the reference node and the node Q. And hence... It must be possible to for the current to flow. How will it flow? From node Q to node P. It will flow from node Q to node P because it becomes closed once I inject a current. So then what will, what will be my relationship? EQ will be equal to EP plus IQ into ZPQ, PQ. Right? What is this? This is the drop in the line. Why is there now a drop? Because I am forcibly injecting a current of 1 per unit. So it will flow from reference to node Q and from Q to P. And therefore it will flow through the line PQ. Okay. And it will cause a drop. Are you clear? Whereas in the previous case, what did I do to get the off-diagonal elements? 
I injected a current at bus I. So in such case, there can be no current flow through between P and Q because Q is hanging in the air. It is not closed, right? Therefore, I didn't have a drop in the line in that when I injected a current at bus I. But now what am I doing? I am closing the path from Q to reference by injecting a current of one per unit. So I have EQ is equal to EP plus IQ Z P Q P Q. This is simply a network equation. That's all. Okay. So from this, I can get ZQQ is equal to ZPQ because EP you can see here is equal to ZPQ and one IQ I have taken to be one per unit into ZPQPQ. What is the ZPQPQ? This is the impedance of the added branch. This is the impedance of the added branch. Clear? Now, so I have found the expressions for the off diagonal elements of Q column, which is added, the n plus one column, which gets added because of bus Q. And I have also found an expression for ZQQ, that is the diagonal element. Now, what happens in type one? What is type one? In type one, the old node is, a, is the reference node. The old node is the reference node. And what is the voltage of the reference node? It is equal to zero, right? Because P becomes the reference node. You remember our equations we have all derived for a line added between P and Q. And when P is the reference node, EP will be equal to zero. Therefore, all ZPI will be equal to zero. And ZPI is equal to ZQI is equal to zero. That means, what does this mean? When you add, when you add a new node, new node, new line between a new node Q and the reference node, the bus and admittance matrix size will increase by one. All the off diagonal elements of the new row and column will be zero. Clear? And what about EQ? EQ is equal to, we saw EP plus IQ, ZPQ, PQ. EP is zero. Therefore, ZQQ will simply be the impedance of the new branch added. Clear? So I have not used any special derivation here. We have derived it by, uh, we have derived a general case of a branch added between any two buses P and Q. And then the special case when P is the reference node, then you get these equations. And for type, so this is what it is for type one. And for type two, we have derived ZPI is equal to ZQI is equal to ZIQ and ZQQ is equal to ZPQ plus ZPQP. Clear? So when you start off, you might wonder, what is this? You're shown a partial network. How do I start? Let us say you have 10 elements. Let us say you have 10 elements. Okay. You want to start building the uh, Z bus. Start with the reference node. Start with the reference node. You find out, take, take any, the first element. You will take any, any node, any new node. Because when you build, I must have one existing node. So the only existing node I have is the reference node. And what is the Z bus of the reference node? It is a null matrix. Now you pick up any element, which is an element between any bus and the reference. Any bus and the reference. Clear? So you're adding type one element. First you can, first when you build the algorithm, you must add a type one element because no other buses exist in the network. So use this formula. Right? So there are no off diagonal elements because the bus admittance matrix size will be one by one. Initially it was none. So when you add the first element, it will be one by one. And that will simply be equal to the impedance of the added line. Impedance of the added line. Next, take the second element. Second element. Again, let that be with another new node and the reference. Then your matrix size will become two by two two by two, right? And uh, then you can use, if it is type one, you can do this, or if it is type two, 
you can use this uh, relationship and build. So that is how you start building the Z bus. So when we do an example, it will be very clear. So we will come back to this when we do the examples. So let me uh, uh, summarize what we have done in this class. So I told you that uh, instead of calculating Z bus as the inverse of Y bus, we can have a systematic algorithm for building the Z bus. And either you add a new element to a partial network, which is between any existing bus and a new bus, or between any two existing buses. And when you introduce a new node or a new bus, so such a line, we call it as a branch. And always remember when you add a branch, the size of the bus impedance matrix is increased by one. It's increased by one order, order of one. And we saw the algorithm of how to modify the Z bus. Thank you.